Decorating your home doesn't have to break the bank and I'm going to prove it to you with 17 ways to make your home look high end and well put together for under $20. And honestly, many of these ideas are nearly free, nearly free. And I can't wait to spill them all in today's video. But before I do that, I do want to say a huge thank you to Built for sponsoring today's video, but I'll tell you more about Built Rewards a little bit later on. The first way to elevate your home for under $20 is to angle your track lighting. Many people have track lights in their home already, but there's kind of angled any which way. Instead, you want to angle your track lighting at particular pieces of art or particular vignettes you've crafted in your home. This is exactly what they do in museums with their track lighting to call attention to those art pieces. So just do the same thing in your own home. This doesn't cost any money. You just have to get on your ladder and angle those lights. I wouldn't suggest doing something like this in a kitchen, but this is a perfect idea for a living room, a hallway, or a bedroom. Another hack I love to do in the bedroom is going to save you a ton of money. Instead of buying a traditional bed frame, because those can cost almost thousands of dollars, you can actually put a bed skirt on your metal bed frame. Metal bed frames are things that most people have anyway. If you put a bed skirt on it, that is going to create the illusion of the bed frame. And to sell that even further, if there is a curtain in your bedroom, or if there's a curtain or like a Roman shade in that bedroom, I want you to match that bed skirt to that that Roman shade. This will create like a continuous look that kind of fakes out that upholstered bed look for less. I actually just did this in one of my series over on Instagram. She could only put her bed in this corner. So I just got a Roman shade and a bed skirt that match one another. And it actually looks like it's a bed as opposed to a Roman shade and a bed skirt. And the next time you need a bedspread, skip the bedding section and instead go to the local dining section. In that section, you will find tablecloths. Of course, I do want you to pass on those plastic ones because those would be very uncomfortable to sleep with, but many companies make tablecloths that are the same size as full and queen size beds. This is a great way to get a bedspread for the spring and summer months that's lightweight, but also establishes that pattern and really pulls your room together without spending a ton of money. This allows you to have the look of a coverlet or a quilt that really ties the design together and add some decoration to your bed, but without paying hundreds and just paying a couple of dollars. This is an example of one that I picked up. I think this was about $19 and I put this on my queen size bed and it really helps to unify the room. And of course, one of the very best ways to save money when decorating your home is to just use your free and for sale groups that you have in your local community. Whether you have a local community website, whether you're using something like um, Facebook or some other search engine, almost every community has like a free and for sale group. So I know I had one of these in my college area. This is where people just want to offload things because I don't know if you knew this, but getting rid of a lot of junk can actually actually cost money. The services that you hire to come pick up those things cost money. So it is, tends to be a lot more economical to just give those things away. I'm telling you, if you live in my neighborhood, you know that for sure, because I'm always giving something away. So definitely make use of those because not only is that a great way to make some money if you're selling old furniture to buy new furniture, but it's also a great way to just pick up things for free. And always remember, people don't know what they have or sometimes they don't value what they have. This has been a great way for me to get really, really high quality lighting pieces and pieces of art that people people were truly just going to throw in the trash for a couple of dollars, if not for free. So in today's video, I'm sharing tons of tips and tricks on how to save money when decorating the home because decorating can be expensive and you know what else is expensive? Rent. And I've actually been gatekeeping like the best resource ever and that is Built. And I do wanna say a huge thanks again to Built for sponsoring today's video. It's one of my biggest life hacks. If you're tired of getting nothing back on rent, you need to use Built. Built is a loyalty program that lets you earn points on rent and around your neighborhood. And there's so much much you can do with built points. You go on Built's website and you sign up. It takes 30 seconds. Basically, instead of paying your rent the way you do now, you just do so via the Built platform. They've been consistently ranked the highest value point currency by the points guy and bank rate. And they're designed to fit your everyday lifestyle. You can redeem them for flights, hotels, workout classes, next month's rent payments, and a lot more. You also get access to exclusive benefits with Built partners. That could be status matches with hotels, transfer bonuses with airlines, and complimentary add-ons like free spin shoes or waters at your favorite workout class. It's like getting treated as a VIP when you travel and in your local neighborhood. Start earning points right now when you sign up using the link in my description box or use the QR code on the screen. And be sure to click my URL so that they know I sent you. The next way to save money when decorating your home is to skip out on the coffee table. I know you're like, Kiva, what are you talking about? I'm not saying have no storage, but instead I want you to consider using nesting tables. Nesting tables are a concept that you can kind of DIY. You can find one table you like, 
like and another table you like maybe in your existing color scheme and put them together. As long as you make sure that they are different heights and they're similar in shape, they can actually fit together and you can have that nesting table look. This tends to be a lot cheaper and I found that you can pick these up at stores that you wouldn't even expect. I'm talking about like your $5 store, your 99 cent store. They have smaller tables that you can kind of put together to create that look for less. I also just find that nesting tables tend to be a lot more practical because not everyone wants to huddle around one coffee table. And if you need a coffee table that is big enough for everyone to access when you're having your traditional seating, that can be really, really expensive. So nesting tables allows you to pull it apart and then inherently becomes a lot more affordable because the tables you're using are so much more affordable, even though you have to buy two instead of just the one. And this is one people share all the time, but it is just so tried and true, I have to share it. The next way you can upgrade your home on a budget is just to change the hardware. Everyone thinks that the nightstand in my bedroom is designer and it's not. It is an Ikea find. And the reason I was able to sell this look as designer is just because I got hardware that looked a lot more high-end than the hardware it originally came with. Honestly, just choosing a hardware that is different from what people see on like the website of the product just totally changes the perception because it looks different. It just simply looks different. I found hardware that I think was like $3 a handle, which isn't totally cheap, but I think it looks so much more high-end than it would have otherwise. And it saved me a ton of money because instead of buying a piece of furniture that already had the hardware that I wanted, that was thousands and thousands of dollars, I was able to find something that was super cheap and then just upgraded with maybe $20 worth of hardware. And if you wanna spend even less money upgrading your hardware, you can truly just spray paint the hardware you already have. A can of spray paint can cost a couple of dollars. They even sell spray paint in the Dollar Tree now. I cannot attest to its quality, but you can just spray paint your existing hardware to give it a new look. Now, this one is controversial, but I also like to put drop cloths to you. So you might have drop cloths left over from a DIY paint project or some other project you were doing, and it's just kind of sitting in the garage. You can actually use that drop cloth to make a piece of artwork. I've seen it done before, I've done it myself. You can stretch it, put some gesso on it, and DIY some artwork. Now, if you don't consider yourself very artistically savvy, maybe skip out on this one, but this is a great way to get a large scale piece of art or a large scale tapestry on a budget. I've even seen people use these large drop cloths to DIY their own curtains. Now that one is more lofty and honestly, it's much more effort than for me <laughs> just buying some cheap curtains, but it's an idea I did wanna put out there if you're a good seamstress. And I know I mentioned repainting old hardware, but you can also repaint old furniture. Sometimes a piece of furniture just needs a new stain or a new coat of paint to really revive it. You can actually get paint really, really affordably by going to a local hardware store and just buying paint samples instead of a big can of paint. You can also use the leftover paint that I'm sure you have from painting a wall and use it on that piece of furniture. Just get like a polyurethane spray or a polyurethane like, you know, tub and seal it so that it's not going to scratch quite like a wall would. But this is a great way, again, to repurpose old paint and it ensures that it matches what you already have because you've used the paint in the home. So the furniture is guaranteed to complement it. Now, this may be a feng shui no-no, but I do wanna note that in case this is something that you practice, but a lot of us have old mirrors sitting around, whether that's from a mirror that was attached to a dresser or the fact that mirrors are just plain affordable. But sometimes we are over them. So a great way to use a mirror is just to paint over it. You can paint over it with that leftover paint to create a piece of art. You can also use that mirror as a frame and just add some leftover peel and stick wallpaper or a cheap peel and stick wallpaper sample onto that to create a nice framed piece of artwork. Another great way to revive an old piece of furniture beyond painting is also just to switch the legs out on it. The legs can really signify whether something looks modern or traditional or this way or that way. You see that a lot these days with like the style of a wing back chair. Wing back chairs appear in every single design style, but maybe more modern chairs have more of like a round ball sort of leg, whereas a mid-century one would have more of like a pin sort of leg. So it's all about the type of leg that you're adding on your piece of furniture and that really dictates the style that it evokes. So maybe swapping out something like that that can be just a few dollars can really make a huge difference. And of course, if you wanna do something totally free, make sure you don't do this illegally, but grab some greenery from your backyard. So if you have a backyard, go and get, you know, a tree branch or something like that and bring it inside and use that as your decor. Faux stems are so incredibly expensive. They are $25 a piece, $50 a piece. Use a stem you already have. Now, if you are worried about bringing some critters in that you don't want, and of course you can spray it with like some bleach spray or something like that to disinfect 
disinfect it before you bring it inside, but just use what you have reoccurring in nature. This is not me telling you to go onto someone else's property and cut down a tree, okay? That's not what Keith is saying. I would never condone that, but use things in your own space that you just probably put in a trash bag to get rid of anyway. Now, this one is only for people who are artistically savvy, and if it doesn't speak to you, that's totally fine. But you can start by DIYing your own art using something like Canva, PowerPoint, really anything you have on your computer. You can use them to design your own art. I will even make art using my tablet and just print it out at my local drugstore. It is so cheap, you can use coupons online to print them really affordably, and you can print things like this for just mere dollars. You can even use your printer at home to do it, and this is a great way to get custom artwork on a budget. And of course, if you are not artistically savvy, there are tons of open stock pieces of artwork that you can buy and download. Just use the relevant websites to do so. Now, something I really like to do is just use my cuter blankets as wall decor. So I will buy blankets that have like a fun pattern on them or look like a piece of art. And sometimes I'll just hang them up on the wall. I'll maybe use a nail to hang them kind of like a towel. You can also use curtain hardware to hang them like a tapestry. However really speaks to you is how you can hang it on the wall. But this is one of my favorite things to do. And while we've spoken on using leftover paint for furniture before, you can also just use leftover paint to emulate uh, an abstract wallpaper that maybe you couldn't afford, or if you just wanna create a small accent wall. Something I see people do all the time is to create just like a little fun accent wall or mural on their wall using leftover paint, and then frame it out with really, really cheap trim that they get from the local hardware store. This is a great way to create the look of a large scale piece of art, but just by doing it on the wall and creating that 3D look using affordable trim. This DIY is one I've been doing since I was a kid, but I love to use leftover tile to create a tray. It doesn't even have to be leftover tile. You can actually go to your local drugstore and get tile that is in a sheet. Then you can just buy some grout and basically make it in a shape that looks like a tray. You can add handles onto it using liquid nails if you want to, but it's a great way to take Take a tile that's already in your home and repeat it in a different way by using those leftover items. If you don't want to, you know, create a tray just using those tiles, you can get like a cheap tray from somewhere like your dollar store, maybe something you have hanging around and use those tiles on top and use that old tray as a base. Speaking of trays, trays are something that appear really, really frequently in interior design and they can be pricey. I actually just want you to start using your old cutting boards as trays, maybe the ones that are kind of run down. You can stain them with some really cheap stain that you can get from Dollar Tree or your local hardware hardware store, get that more rustic look and use them maybe as a riser in your bathroom or as a tray on your coffee table where you're going to create those really nice vignettes. And the final tip is to rearrange your existing furniture. I cannot tell you how much of a difference it makes to just rearrange pieces you already have in your own space. Whether that means creating a new layout in your living room or just rotating items all throughout your home. You know, if you're looking at an entry table every single day, maybe just move that to a bathroom or move it to a bedroom and bring a different table out there. It kind of gives you that feel of getting a new piece of furniture even though you haven't and it kind of has satiated the desire for something new and it provides a refreshed look in your space. And honestly, I recommend rotating your furniture and your decor anyway so that your home feels different all throughout the different seasons. But that's it for today's video. Those are a few ways to make your home look well put together and cohesive and beautiful without breaking the bank. Most of these things you can achieve for under $20 and you can achieve them just by shopping your own home, which is one of my favorite things to do. And if you wanna start earning points right now with Build, be sure to click the link down in my description box or use the QR code you see here up on the screen. And be sure to use my URL so that they know I sent you. Thank you so much for watching today's video and until next time, have a beautiful day.